The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, traders. So welcome to the Bookmap uh, Pro Trader webinar series. Uh, so we have uh, the entire week, um, uh, different traders uh, that are presenting. On uh, Friday, though, we're going to uh, do a recap of all the different traders, uh, as well as our uh, regular uh, Bookmap Advanced uh, Education. Okay, so that will be the uh, webinar on Friday. So you've registered now once uh, for the entire uh, uh, session or um, series, okay? So uh, no need to, uh, to register again. Uh, all right, well, uh, uh, today uh, we have a professional uh, trader here, Scott Pulsini. Uh, Scott's been trading for over 20 years. Uh, pretty, pretty incredible trader here. Uh, I don't know if you guys know his story. We'll probably get into it a bit, but uh, as you can see, during the years of 2002 to 2005, he was responsible for about 10% of the S&P E-mini futures volume. Uh, pr pretty incredible uh, to, to just understand one tick uh, and how many thousands of dollars are within one tick. Uh, you really have to have nerves of steel. Uh, anyway, Scott now focuses on trading both the equities and the futures um, and has a very particular way and innate abilities of reading the order flow and volume and price patterns here. So let's just go through the risk disclaimer first here. Trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And then one more page here uh, for more information on Scott. Okay, there's his Twitter feed here, at Scott Pulsini. Uh, YouTube, uh, you can uh, search for uh, Scott Pulsini. Uh, he, he did an a interview with us okay, that uh, I think you guys would really enjoy. I'll put that into the chat for you. Okay, so look for that. Uh, and then there's also the Bookmap affiliate link here. So if you are interested in Bookmap, uh, uh, with our uh, educator partners, uh, we offer special deals. Okay, so I'll put this into the chat as well, uh, and you can check out the uh, uh, special deals offered from Scott. Okay, uh, other than that, let me just turn it right over to Scott, and we're, we're going to get the conversation going here. Hey, Bruce, how are you? I'm doing well, Scott. How are you? Good. Okay, so, Thanks for having me on. Oh, yeah, and it's a, it's a pleasure. Um, so uh, I gave you the, uh, the, the screen there. Okay, what do you see? I've got seven screens, so. Okay, <laughs> what, I see uh, two see? girls uh, in uh, in the foreground and uh, kind of desert. Uh, uh, in that would the be my daughter, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now I see three arrows in book map there. Yeah, I don't know why it keeps disappearing on me here, but. Um, yeah, I don't know why that's not, okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, just, I was gonna show some examples after we got into it, but uh, feel free to ask me anything you'd like. <clears throat> uh, the, uh, there's a few questions just off the bat here, guys. The, all of these webinars will be recorded, uh, and uh, uh, I'll send you the uh, the link, okay? Or it'll be up on YouTube. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, go ahead, Scott, and uh, let's, uh, let's get the ball rolling here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to kind of you know, praise book map. I've been trading for 20 years. And <clears throat> as you said earlier on, I was, a, you know, one of the biggest scalpers in the world at one time when I was averaging 10% of the daily volume every single day in the E-mini S&P futures. So back then I would trade about 500,000 contracts a day and I was 50,000 of those uh, round turns every single day. So that shows how, you know, involved I was on a tick to tick basis in the markets. And then, you know, like for most traders back in that time, the, uh, you know, the low volatility at the time coupled with the uh, algos starting to take hold of the marketplace, especially the gas, my, you know, my style of trading just disappeared. You know, I went from making millions to zero basically overnight. And then, you know, I've spent years trying to reinvent my style where I can be a little more longer term because, you know, if you're trying to trade tick for tick um, in these markets and most of these futures markets, I mean, anyone will tell you it's it's nearly impossible unless you, you know, know how to write programs and you can compete that way. But if you're clicking a mouse, yeah, good luck to you. I'd, I'd love to meet you and if you can show me you've made money consistently over, you know, a longer period of time because it, it's, in my eyes, it's, it's, it's impossible. So, and that's coming from someone who's, who is, you know, watching every tick of the market all day long back then so um 
Any yeah. questions about that? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, how <laughs> how did you ever get to trading such volume like that? And how many ticks or points were you looking for? And um, uh, how could the market handle such uh, uh, such volume like that from from one individual trader? Yeah, I mean, well, I got started. Um, I actually started trading <clears throat> at a firm uh, called King Street Trading back then, uh, right right before 9/11 uh, happened. So I was I was just learning. I had lost money every day for my first two months of my career. I was about to get fired, literally. Um, then 9/11 happened, and they closed the uh, U.S. equities down for about a week. Um, U.S. markets, I should say. And then, uh, so I, I wanted to get experience. <clears throat> During that week, because I, you know, I was obviously on the uh, cusp of getting fired, so I, I went over to the uh, European markets and started trading the German DAX uh, overnight just to just to get some experience. And I just started seeing some things there, where when the uh, E-mini S&P futures reopened, I, I just implemented it there, and you know, I went from losing every day and then just started to make money each and every day. You know, small amounts. So I started as a trader as well, like. There's a misconception out there as well um, about me is, you know, that I was like just I was just a huge trader to begin with. I was, you know, a one and two lot trader to start just like everybody else mostly, you know. So but the thing with me is when, you know, when it clicks, it clicks. And I and I knew that I had figured something out in the market, um, you know, trading futures as, as far from a scalping standpoint. So, um, you know, from that point on, I just I started making money every day. Um, and then I went from ones to twos, to twos to fours, to fours to eights, you know, so I, I, I was trading, um, you know, after about a year or so, right when I started making money, I literally was just making a couple thousand bucks a day, which I don't mean to make that sound trivial, but back then, you know, there was guys in my firms that were making millions. So my driving force was always, you know, if these, if these clowns, some of these guys were major clowns. So I knew if, if they can make money, I can make money. So I had gone into my, um, I got into the owner of the firm's office and you got to remember I was about to get fired. And so I go from that to going into his office and making him a bet that I would be the number one trader the following year, which was 2002. Um, and I think that the guy the year before had made 3 million bucks or um, maybe a little, I'm sorry, less than 2 million. But anyway, um, I ended up winning that bet the following year. That's how confident I was in what I was seeing in the marketplace. So, and then the rest was history. You know, I just started, I would just, as I got better at it and more confident in it, I just would up my size and, you know, I was just a really short term scalper. And, you know, one of the, one of the main games back then was the spoofing, right? It's illegal now, but back then that's what the big traders did. You know, you'd have Mark, you'd have, and that, that's going to lead me into what's going on now as well. Um, even though, you know, quote unquote, there's not supposed to be any spoofing in the market. It's absolutely impossible for these, for these um, regulators to, to, catch everybody doing it right i mean it, it, it's there's billions of trade that trades that go on every day every week that there's no way they can catch everybody doing it but the point is i you know that was one of the games back then is you know putting in size pulling it you know playing games like that and that's how i kind of you know once i saw book map it like the light went on again for me as far as things making sense again because anyone who's been in these markets for the last five ten years you try to watch a ladder you know like i did back then that's all i used to trade off of i i really even had charts up i would just trade right off of the ladder and watch the market market um the orders come in and trade off that you know just basing my um opinions off that but anybody who tries to watch a ladder now you know crude oil e-mini s p good luck right i mean even the size in there if you're just looking at the at the order book uh, on the dome you know depth of market you don't you don't know what's real you'll see a thousand lots sitting there you know as on an offer and you say okay i'm gonna sell in front of this i'm gonna lean on that you sell and all of a sudden that thousand lot goes to a, a five lot and then the market just rips right through it right so it's like that's why that's why trading or scalping is so hard nowadays is because Back when I was trading, you can rely on size in the book. So, you know, you would see a 3,000 lot above you as an offer, and you say, okay, I can sell here. And if they start, you know, bidding through that 3,000 lot, then I can get out. Nowadays, um, you know, before book map, you, you, you can't rely on anything. You don't know whether it's real, whether it's fake, whether they're going to pull it, have they been pulling it. So, again, once once I was introduced to book map um, by Dr. Brett Steinbarger, 
it was like, again, the light just went on for me. Can you just uh, give us a, an idea, like, like um, just an example of like how many contracts you were trading at for like just one scalp and then uh, the amount of money per tick? Uh, just, I'm yeah, just I mean, really curious. Yeah, I mean, I, I was able to put on, you know, at my height, I was able to put on 3,000 E-mini uh, S&P contracts. But, you know, I, I, it's embarrassing to say the only time I ever had 3,000 on when I was wrong, right, because I was trying to defend my position. You know, I would be long and it would keep coming down. I just keep buying more and more and more, believing I was right, and then just get run over, right? So my average size, I'd be trading, you know, between probably around three to 500 contracts. And, and I... I would go for a few ticks, a point, two points maybe. Um, again, it was all based on the way the orders were coming in the book and the order flow, and and that that's how I traded. But I was never, I was never, you know, and I and I obviously gravitated to that type of trading for a reason, right? My mind, and this is another important thing for traders. It's like you you have to do what makes sense to you and what's comfortable for you, right? So it it's taken me years, literally years, to be able to put on a trade and sit through the nonsense um, back and forth action right i mean it was and that's why i gravitated towards the scalping because i was able to get in and out and i didn't have to be tortured by these you know where it goes in your favor and then comes back then it's in your face then it goes back in your favor and then it's in your face like I, that, that, that would just kill me back then so that's why i gravitate gravitated towards scalping to begin with um so yeah i mean i would my average size would probably probably 500 and i, I could trade up to up to 3,000 at a time if I needed to. Wow. Wow. Incredible. Well, uh, yeah, dive right in, Scott. Well, I mean, like, uh, let this, uh, just, uh, I think everyone's like super curious here. Um, uh, what, what are you looking at here? And, uh, and maybe some of these examples, uh, uh, and yeah, so I, get, get, right. So I, I have some examples, uh, both, uh, futures and equities. And in my opinion, you know, I've, I've only been following equities for, you know, about a year and a half now, but, I highly recommend any trader start, especially with this software, the Bookmap, Bookmap software, to start watching equities as well. Because, you know, with futures markets, you only have a few futures markets that that a lot of guys are watching, right? The many futures, uh, crude, maybe gold. The thing is, when those markets aren't aren't moving or they're just overrun by the algo, algos that day, you're going to get smoked, right? So the whole idea of this program to me is to be able to know when the algos are going crazy and just to back off that market. But if you're only watching two things, it's like then you're just sitting around twiddling your thumbs all day, you know, being mad that you don't have an opportunity to make money. When you add equities in, these individual equities, a lot of these equities are not um, overrun by algos at all, right? Especially when they're in play, as they say. So when, you know, when, when there's news on the stock, a lot of the algos are turned off because they know the big funds are going to start coming in and, and there's nothing more than these algos hate more is big money, right? That's when they get run over and they have to turn off the, turn them off. But 80% 80, 80 of the time in both stocks and futures, there's nothing going on and that's when algos have their heyday, right? And that's what just crushes the retail trader getting whipsawed all day long. So um, I highly recommend looking at some of these um, equities as well. And I'll give you some examples. Some are, uh, and I'll just show just not to cherry pick. I literally took like three or four just from this morning, you know, before I got on just to show you how accurate or, you know, how, how helpful this can be. So, <clears throat> um, you know, the bottom, the bottom line with this book map program, you know, I've told, told you uh, many times, Bruce, that this is the most incredible thing I've seen in my 20 years. I mean, I know there's, there's programs out there, uh, software out there that reads, supposedly reads the, you know, the Delta and everything else. But the way it's presented here, it makes it's just so much easier in your brain to look at it. You know, like like looking at this. You tell me this is not easier to look at than looking at a, a price ladder moving back and forth with, you know, 5,000 changes of price and volume, you know, just scrambling your mind, right? You look at this and you see exactly what's going on. You can see where the resting liqui offer liquidity was. You can see the big buying right through it. You can see, so this part, this is an example of a, <clears throat> this is one of my setups. And, and another thing too is I've only been using this program for maybe, maybe the middle of May till now. So, you know, I, I only have, you know, a few setups, I guess. I mean, maybe five to 10 setups, but you know, it, it's just, it's exciting. Trading is exciting to me again, because every day I get up, it's like, you can research and you can review and 
there's so many more things you can find with the games that these algorithms are playing and when they're stuck. And the other great thing about Bookmap too is the replay um, option, where you can instead of sitting here for three years, you know, watching market action minute by minute until you finally, which is usually literally, I think that is the um, what they say is the time span for a trader to become proficient. You can get on Bookmap. Record your data for the day. You know, you turn it on in the beginning, beginning of the markets, and then turn it off when markets close. You can go back and you can review the actual trading at a, you know up to 164 times the regular speed. So it's like you can take out days and days and days in just a couple hours, and just in, as far as education and learning, like learning the games, learning the setups. So that that's another incredible thing where your learning curve is just it's shortened so much by being able to. You know, replay the data, but so I'll get into some of these examples. So this is one of my one of my favorite um, setups in either futures or uh, equities. But so you can see here, um, you could, could you see my arrow, Bruce? Yes. Okay. So you, know, you can see here, um, you, had, you had this resting liquidity right around 3:45, and this is the stock shop uh, SHOP. So they bought they bought through this liquidity, no pullback. Bought through this liquidity. And then it starts to inch up to this liquidity. So this is one of my favorite setups where they try to buy it, fails, comes back, try to buy it again. The thing is they're buying it and this liquidity is not, it's not going away. If anything, it's getting, they're putting more offers in, right? So it's like they tried to buy through, no rejection, comes back, try it again. Not only did it not get it through, this liquidity went nowhere, right? So this is a perfect, you know, trading is all about risk reward, right? Especially nowadays. You have to have multiples on risk reward because you're just not going to make it trying to trade one for one. So this is a per example where you, know, you could even have got you, you could have been aggressive and got short right here, right? But even if you're a more conservative trader, you, you wait for the pullback again, then it comes up again. Now look at the difference in the buying area, right? You know, so this is this was huge buying, you know, indicated by the size of the bubbles. Then it comes up here, still decent buying, comes up here, you can see it's starting to wane a little bit, and then the last time it comes up, there's there's it's barely anything. So not only do you see the buyers failing as far as uh, you know the size they're putting in and trying to take out the market, this liquidity has gone nowhere, right? So it ends up. Uh, let's see if I got the. I think I got this right. So you can see right here, right? Here it is. Here's the move. Boom. And this is a this is a six dollar move on the stock, right? I have it condensed a little bit, but I just did this to, to show, you know, this is an actual trade that I took where. You can risk right here. You can risk 50 cents to make six dollars. Right? I mean, that, that's the kind of risk reward that that what is how you're going to be successful, right? Um, so that that's one example. Let's see what I got here for my next. So, uh, and are you and you're covering uh, kind of down where that big volume was um, uh, initially like uh, uh, filled, or that big uh, right. liquidity right. was initially filled. So that's okay. the other thing too, right? You you get all these traders that come on with example, not on not on your site, but you know. They give examples of the entries, but it's like, okay, great. And now when do I get out, right? And you've got to you've got to come up with a system on your own where you're not just scrambling as the market's trading. You have to come up with your with your ideas, um, your your playbook. Um, I've I've learned where you say, okay, when I see this, when I when I see it move back to where the original buying came in, I'm out of I'm out of it all, depending on what happens here or. Um, I'm out of a piece. So you can see as it came back down here, the liquidity came back in. So it's not a bad idea to take your $6 move and, and just get out, right? I think that's another fallacy of a lot of traders where they want this this huge move back down, right? There's nothing wrong with risking 50 cents and making six bucks and getting out and waiting for your next setup, right? And that's the whole point of having multiple things you can be watching where you're not you're not trying to milk every last you know penny out of your trade. Because this thing can easily, I can't remember what it did this day, this is a couple months back, but this can easily just turn around and right, right back up. Like, take your profit, move on, right? So it's kind of a scalper mentality, but you're just going for a little longer time frame and you're, and you're getting multiples on your risk, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, be beautiful, beautiful stuff. Okay, uh, so let's see. This was actually, this next one was from, it's a trade I took on Friday. Um, so this is another thing actually I learned from you, Bruce, where, and it's kind of counterintuitive where, so you would think when you look at this chart, right, there's really no liquidity above and you got all this liquidity below. So you would be thinking as common sense wise, which obviously as we all know as traders, it's um, not, doesn't make a lot of sense most of the time as far as common sense, it's usually opposite and this is a perfect example, right? So 
a normal trader looking at this would be like, wow, look at all this buying, look at all this liquidity, man, this thing is going up, right? And they would get in here. And so what I, the way I see it, and of course, again, this is why it's really important to get on with Bruce, especially when you're starting out to kind of learn how he sees things and then come up with your own ideas. But when he had said one time that these markets tend to move to the liquidity, that set off a light in my head as well. It makes perfect sense. You got to remember these funds, these funds and algos, like they have a much uh, bigger risk threshold than the average trader, right? So they'll play these games up here. They'll get they'll get short and they'll push it down in this liquidity. Or if they want to get long, this this is showing you what's going on. This is showing you that these these funds or algos they want to get long down here. That's why this has been sitting in here for so long, right? And that's another important thing of what, of looking at this is the longer this has been sitting in, the more real it is, right? So we were talking about earlier how, you know, when you're looking at an order book and you see a thousand lot and it comes down and it disappears to a five lot and you're screwed, here you know, okay, hey, they're willing to have this in. All these different liquidity areas have been in here the entire time. So the odds are when this market comes down into it, that it's, it's real and you can lean on that, right? If you wanted to get long. So this this example was, um, you know, I think this was VWAP right here. So I ended up shorting it, uh, anticipating a move in the liquidity, right? And then once this liquidity got filled, just think about it. If you're if you're the trader, if you're the fund, and you want to get long, you're going to put your bids down here, and you're going to try to force either wait or kind of force it into your bids. This is what I used to do as a scalper, right? I this is exactly what I used to do. I used to put my resting bids in. And then I would wait for my opportunity and then literally push the market into my bids, right? So I would get short, 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 and then I would just, I would get filled, I get filled, I get filled, I get filled. Or if I wanted to get long, I'd do the same thing. I'd get long and then I'd start pushing it, you know, back, back, back up to the, the highs. So this is a perfect example. So you can see here, uh, there you go. So <laughs> this, so this move, granted this, this was on the, um, China news, but it doesn't matter. This was going to happen regardless, in my opinion. It just happened a lot faster. But you see, this is, for example, you can see, you know, I got short up here. This is condensed now, but I got short somewhere by, you know, 97.70, and the thing rips through this liquidity, this liquidity, this liquidity. So now all these guys are completely filled, right? You can see how it didn't, the liquidity doesn't stretch here because they all got filled on their order. So now this fund or funds are all filled on their bids. And then the rest of the day, you know, it goes a little lower here. And then once it starts to clear the rest of the day, it went all the way back up. I think it closed at 97.10. So this is a perfect example of um, the games that they play, right? They push it into their into their orders. Now they're good to go. Now it goes back up, right? So it's counterintuitive to start. That's the whole point. You got to figure out even if you want to be long this stock or whatever it is, you've got to figure out what the right time of getting long is, right? You don't want to get long up here when you see all this liquidity. You wait for this, all these guys to get filled like they wanted, and then you get long. Does that make sense? A absolutely. I mean, uh, it, it's um, uh, fascinating to hear, like uh, you know, larger players such as yourself and 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 these uh, uh, these firms or these funds, uh, they're setting targets first, uh, and then they're getting involved into the market. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, it's kind of counterintuitive way of, uh, of thinking those, but, uh, uh, you know, fascinating to, to, uh, think about like, okay, well, I'm, this is where, like, I think it's going to go. And then let's start to look for, uh, opportunities to get short, to go into right. that area. Right. The key is the opportunity to get short. So, you know, if you want to get short here, you know, you see all these buyers, anytime that you get confused in the market, you just got to say, what well, what would I do if this was me, right? What If I'm a huge trader, I'm buying here, I'm buying here, I'm buying. I mean, you see no red, there's no selling at all. So what are all these guys going to do when this thing gets below this area, right? And we just saw it, it you know, fell two and a half dollars. So you can wait. So obviously you, you don't want to get short right here per se, right? Maybe if, like, like the previous example where it came up in the liquidity and it couldn't get through. Yeah, that you can get aggressive right there. But if you want to be conservative, you wait till these guys are off sides knowing, okay, I'm going to sell here and then I'm going to watch what happens as it moves in this liquidity. And as, as we saw, it went right through everything. So the, the point is you can be as right as the, as the day is long. You have to know when the opportune moment to, to place that order is. So that that's the key to trading, right? Um, and again, this program is is unbelievable in showing you that. 
So this is, uh, let's move into futures a little bit. Um, so another thing that I've noticed, um, again, 80% of the time, maybe even more, it's been a little less lately just because all the news going on, but you're talking um, overall, you know, 80% of the time, these algos are just having a field day in these in these futures markets, right? Because there's there's no big money coming in, and they know they can whip it around, and, and no one, they're not going to get caught, right? They're not going to, someone's not going to step up and take their thousand lot away from them and, and rip it up another, you know, 10 ticks and, and get them caught. That's that's the whole idea. You got to know when to stay out, out of the market because of the games that are being played, right? So what I look for, and this is very basic, most charting pattern, this is think or swim, but most charting patterns have this. Um, I look for relative volume before I even consider trading futures anymore, right? So I need to see, so for instance, this was about uh, uh, maybe three times th this area right here, three times the normal volume. That's when you can say, okay, you know, your ears get pricked. Okay, now I'm interested. Now, then you go to book map to see. So. What happened here is you can see them buying this up, but as they're buying, it's obviously running in, and I'm gonna show this on the book map as well, but it's just from a chart aspect, you can see it's running into orders, right? I mean, that's why the, the volume is, so these buyers, yeah, they're being aggressive, but somebody's selling it, right? That, or there would be, it would be like this, right? It would be like this move where it goes straight up with no relative volume. Here, you know, people are fighting back. So what I look for, and this is why you have to come up with your own playbook, your own plan. I look for high relative volumes into areas that I that I understand, and then I look for the failure, right? So this one was, you know, buyers, buyers. It didn't quite get here, and but I'll show you look back why I got why it was aggressive. I usually will wait for it to touch it. So this is the daily, daily value area. This is VWAP here, and then this is the standard deviation um, of the VWAP. So I usually will wait for the standard deviation, especially in crude, just to see what it does. But you can see, you know, they they were trying to buy it, trying to buy it, and kind of failed. Then it came came down with no volume, right? So where are all these buyers now, right? So came down here, volume came in again. Now, now the thing is, if it would have held here and got back above this area, that's a long. But they sold here, so now you have volume here, volume here, volume here. So you know there's a lot of traders with their bets in this area. Right, so then you wait to see, then you can see it failed, failed through VWAP, huge move down. So let me show you what happened on book map. Uh, right. Okay, so this was the huge buying that we saw. Um, let's see if I can, yeah, cool. We'll do it like this. So this was this area, right? You can see the huge buyers, right? Like And like we talked about, okay, if this is you buying this, so you had all the size in the world and you bought all this and then I did this, what, what, were you, what are you gonna be thinking to yourself? Oh shit, <laughs> I'm in trouble, right? So comes down here, comes, you know, now it's just playing games. So I shorted as it came back into this area here because I knew these guys were off sides and one, because of the big buying bubbles, two, because of the relative volume. So I knew there was a ton of traders here that were caught, moved down, rejected, retest, I got short. I took a little heat, not much, I mean, this was, you know, I think it was like eight ticks, nine ticks. And then you can see these guys puked it out, right? And I ended up buying down here. So you can see, and that's this move here. So you can see the, these are all, you know, this is just one piece of the puzzle, right? Most traders trade just off this and some are successful, right? You could probably trade off this, but when you, when you add this in and you can really see what was happening, I mean, this is, this is, I mean, when you look at this, it's just so much clearer to my mind anyway, what was going on, right? So when I shorted here, I'm like, okay, these buyers are caught. There was a chance, obviously there's always a chance in trading. I think it was right around here that it could rip right back up. But I got this liquidity that I can lean on to and you can see it was here the whole time. You can see as this market came up, somebody put an offer and they're like, okay, let's play, you know? So, um, I don't know why I did that, okay. So I, when I sold here, I'm like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell here and my stop's up here. If it goes up up here, I'm wrong, right? And that's another thing traders, traders need to realize. You're going to be wrong a lot. And there's nothing wrong with being wrong, right? One, you just need to understand why you were wrong. And you have to have a risk reward that is, that is, you know, where you are wrong. You could be wrong five times. But when you make money, you make, you know, eight times your money on one trade. So that's what trading is. I, there's such a misconception out there that, you know, every trade needs to be right. You need to be right 75% of the time. It, it, it's almost impossible, right? Unless you're trading tick for tick with an, with an algo. Okay, so 
So that was that move. Um, that was crude. Uh, let's see what else I got here. Um, any questions so far, Bruce? Uh, yeah, I mean, so uh, it, it's interesting to see like how um, it, you're looking at bigger picture stuff here uh, and different things. Uh, you're talking about relative volume. You're talking about liquidity, um, and uh, uh, but also the, the 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 psychology here of like, okay, well, this is where these guys are. Where are they going to be wrong? Where are they going to be covering? Um, uh, uh, of course, that's uh, 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 very important. But um, very curious about some of these other kind of longer term things that you're looking at, like the relative volume, or uh, I guess you're going to go through it in this example again here. Yeah, so relative volume, I mean, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory, I'm sure you know, but some traders know what it is. It's just showing you, when when this lights up yellow for me, it's showing me that the market is trading at least two times more normal normal volume for that time period, right? So for this five-minute time period right here, which was about, uh, I'm in Arizona, so this is just before 6 o'clock um, or 8 o'clock central. So for this time period, this traded almost seven times more normal volume than on, 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 on at this time every day, right? So that is really important information. This is when you want to look to get involved. Not that you see this and all of a sudden you just start trading it. You wait for your setup. You wait to see what you want to see. Then you trade. But you're getting volume like this. You stay out of the market, and that's why you're getting the whipsaw trade because these algos, this is where they make their money. This is where they crush the retail trader. Whipsaw, 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 whipsaw. You think it's going to break? Oh, no, it went back up. So it's like this is where you stay out. When you start seeing this, then you can kind of have an idea, okay, there's some major players involved now. Algos are probably run over as well. Now I'm going to wait for my setup on Bookmap, right? So this was um, – you can see here they tried to buy it through VWAP, and this, the middle lines of VWAP, and these are the standard deviations. I think it's a two-time standard deviation. Um, so it you know broke through. They tried to sell it, still high volume. Again, this is, there's no signal here, right? Who, who who won? You can't tell who won right here. You just, it's it's a it's a coin toss until you see somebody fail, right? So but you know once it gets above this area and, and kind of holds or gets below. You're good to go, right? At least for a for a, some type of profit. So, so you had another move back up here on the volume. I'm sorry, I take that back. So this was, oh yeah, okay. So then you had so you had high volume, high volume, and then it started to move above again, high volume. This is two and a half times, this is like seven times the volume. But again, it's moving up and high volume. But you got to remember, if it's high volume, there's sellers there, there's offers, people are willing to sell. So again, if it would have ripped up and then held. I'll, I'll be long, but you can see it moved up here. Now, now I'm paying attention, right? So now let's go to book map. Let's see. All right. So let's see if I can do this again. <clears throat> so here I was a little aggressive, right? I don't usually just pop in a sell order here, especially in a big buying, but I had already had an idea of what was going on here. You know, they tried here. Again, it was relative volume pretty high. I see the big buying. I just sold. I was kind of leaning on this uh, this liquidity right here. All right, see, so yeah, see, see where my stop is. Um, this came in after. This is another great thing about this. You can see like what you were thinking and what you were doing. Like I, I would have had no idea if I, you know, where my order was three weeks later or whenever this was. But you can see I put this I put this offer in or my um, my buy stop to get out right here because I thought. You see it ran in here with big buying, that's why I sold it. So I'm like, okay, so if I'm wrong, it's got to go through this, it's got to go through this at the time, and then I'm out, right? So I'm risking, it was about 16 ticks. But I knew if I was right, it was going to be it was going to be a great trade, again, because all of these traders, there's, there's big bets placed right here. So if I'm right, if I'm wrong, I lose 15 ticks. If I'm right, I make four, four or five times that, right? And that's what you have to figure out yourself. you got to figure out what kind of relative volume causes – what what kind of move can you expect when you see seven times normal volume? When this breaks out of here, how much can you expect, right? Um, so so I got short there, and I and I think I added on this one as well. Um, let's see. Right. So so I got short here, and then thing broke. Or you can see this. So I I was risking 15 ticks. This was trading like 56 40 three or something where I got short and I covered at 56.86. So, I mean, that's almost a 60 tick 
risking 15 to make 60. There you go, four to one, right? But I knew if I was right, this thing was gonna break at least 60 ticks based on all of this volume that occurred here relatively, right? Because there are big bets being placed, wrong puke. Um, uh, fantastic. Uh, uh, Scott, I'm, I'm also just kind of curious if you um, are looking at kind of market structure, uh, like there's a previous high there uh, in that on the candlestick chart, uh, and, um, and, it, and it did not accept above that area. Yeah, I mean, again, you, you have to do, so I, I didn't look at that. I was just looking at, I was looking at it couldn't make it above this um, DBA, this upper band of the VWAP. On higher volume, they failed. Broke, broke VWAP. You know, I got I got in here and, and I added. I'm going to show you how how hard trading really is, even when you're right. This one actually hurt. This is a big winner. I think I made 1,700 bucks on a two lot. But, um, but yeah, Bruce, that exactly. You have to come up with what works for you. So I can sit here and talk to these traders all day long. On this is what I saw. This is what I saw. You, it's got to make sense to you. But you you know whatever you see. So yeah, you can say oh it didn't make a higher high right here. Then you look for whatever you want, and uh, you know. Then you see it in the book map. Okay, now the sellers are coming in. Then you can get in. There's so many different variations of, of putting a winning trade on. It's just got to make sense to you, right? This is what I look for. This is what makes sense to me. It's got to make sense to you. Does that make sense to you, Bruce? Right. Right. No. No. Exactly. Right. So, so this was. Um, so yeah, I got out here, and then when you see this, some traders might uh, throw up because I almost did. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I know that's not it. This is it. So, this, so I got short up at, uh, I'm not controlling this very well, but I got short at, uh, goodness. Yeah, so this was, there it is. So this is 50, no, that's not the right trade. I think this is a different trade now. I don't know, this is right. So I got short up here, if you remember, it was like 62.40, right? So it comes down here, and I was I was so happy to catch that move. I got out. I mean, you can see right here, what, why did I get out? Because I had profit? Now, that, that's just, that's not a smart way to trade. You have to get out when you see a reason to get out, and that's because you like, that you, you made, you know, 60 ticks on the trade. I mean, you can, yeah, you want to take profit, but wait till you see a reason to get out. What what reason did I have to get out here? Yeah, it was a quick move. But I mean, where where are the buyers? Where are the buyers? Where are the buyers? Where are the buyers? Right. So I got out one here. I still held one. I mean, granted, if you have multiple contracts on, it's not a horrible idea, especially in crude because it snaps back so often. It's not a ter terrible idea to get out of one. But I mean, looking back at this, like there is no reason for me to get out of anything here. You know, maybe when I saw the buyers trying, okay, yeah, I can get out of one here. You can see this resting lick was here the whole time. This would have been a more uh, sensible area to get out of at least one, right? Because you had lick liquidity that's been sitting in here, the resting bids. You saw some buyers come in real time. Okay, yeah, cover one here. But I mean, I cost myself 40 ticks just by not holding me here. So then it swept down. This thing happened so fast. It swept so fast. It shows my flow here, and then didn't even show it until right here where the buyers are coming. But I got out because I saw this liquidity here. I saw the buyers coming in. And lo and behold, they were wrong again, and it went down. I think it this went down another dollar or dollar and a half. You know, all traders are going to be like, oh, my God, why didn't I stay in it? I mean, you got to be realistic in, in what you're doing, right? I mean, it, it's very hard to, especially in crew, think you're going to catch a, a two and a half dollar move on one swipe down. But I was very happy with this trade. I mean, you can see right here, I made 1700 on the two lot, which is, that's pretty incredible in that shorter period of time. Um, so does this make sense, Bruce, and you know, why I, there's no reason to get out of here, basically. This is just a good lesson, again, using bookmap. If you're looking at a chart, you don't see any of this. You don't, I mean, yeah, you see the, you see the selling, but you don't see are the buyers stepping in, right? Right here was not a reason to get out. Right here was more of a reason, or here was more of a reason. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's hard. It's hard when you see stuff like that. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, yeah, to uh, uh, try to confirm it, it you know, because it, it is going into high liquidity there, um, you know, around that 6180 or so. Uh, but um, uh, it just continues to go right through it. Um, right. But the thing is, liquidity is one thing, but if, you know, they can still drill it right through there. You got to see some buyers winning, right? You got to start seeing this to 
to even remotely think about getting out. Like this was not a bad cover for me. I was fine with this. Um, you know, this is hard. There's no, and then the other thing is too, especially using this program. Okay, you buy here, you get out just in case. But when you see this fail again, and you see them come in and drill this liquidity again, get back in, right? I mean, this is you cost yourself maybe 15 ticks, but get back in, get short here, put your stop right here where it came back in. Here's liquidity went right through it. Put your stop here, and then ride it out. You know, the selling just got bigger and bigger. Again, I think this went down another hundred ticks after this. So that's just for example how this is just so much more. So much easier on the mind to see what is actually happening. If you're watching the order book, you have no clue. I mean, this stuff's moving so fast. It's just, I mean, you might as well flip a coin and, and close your eyes. Here you can see, okay, I'm out. Oh, they're coming back in. Wow, they just ripped through this liquidity. There's no buying. Okay, I'm going to sell right here. I'm going to put my stop here and let's see what happens, right? And you fall into another eight to one winner. So that that's why this program is the most powerful thing that I've ever seen. Um, Let's see. So this one, this is just a ES scalp that I did. Um, another example. So here's the resting lick. It's been there the whole time, so you know it's legit. Um, you know, as they come in, you can see they bought it up. That's fine. This gonna easily just rip through. But hey, lo and behold, failure comes back again. I, this is one of my favorite trades where you see them take out liquidity. They think they got it. Again, always put yourself like you're this trader. Are you, you gonna be happy if you just bought 2,000 contracts and all of a sudden it's in your face? comes up buying starts to dry up a little bit in the same exact area you could get short here if you're aggressive or you just wait the minute the sellers come back come back in sell it here's the puke boom right so you're risking you could have sold right even if you waited to here this is 2750 ish you could risk two points right once it got back above this area you're risking two points to make you know four or five this is yes i mean that's not my favorite market anymore which is kind of ironic because this is where i used to dominate but you know, it's just so rotational and just so many whipsaws. Again, that's very hard for me to sit through this stuff. But, um, you know, I remember what happened here. I didn't take this trade, but here's another example. Comes down here. You see some big buying as it's free falling. Comes, you know, rejects, comes back. Selling dries up. I mean, I'm almost certain, especially now in today's market, um, that this went right back to the high. But here's another example where you just, you don't even have to be looking at a chart. You can just play, you know, what these traders are doing. People need to realize the chart, Price means nothing without volume. Volume is what drives the market, not price. So you can literally make a living just trading off these type of setups without even having a chart up. And I know that for a fact because I used to do it, you know, with my naked eye with the order book, but I didn't have any charts up at the time. So I just did it on pure order flow. So when you have both, you have, you're a powerful trader. Is is the point? Um, let's see. We've got so, some more. so these are from today. Show that I'm not uh, cherry picking the best examples. And so this is Roku today. Um, so I saw this coming down. I, I missed all of this. You know, you can. So you're, you're going to notice too, as you see. So this stock is not overrun with algos, right? I'm going to show you the example of a stock that's over, overrun with algos because it looks like a Christmas tree. Here you can just see, you know, these, these darker areas. And you just know, like, this is not a whipsaw. You're not going to get whipsawed out of your mind with these algos playing games, right? So this is very clean. So it comes down here. This is one of my favorite setups as well. Comes in the liquidity. Not only were they, you know, not only did this liquidity not pull, there, the sell, there are no sellers. The buyers are stepping up into this liquidity. So again, you can buy here. You can just buy on this and be aggressive, or you can wait for a move and pull back. You can get long here too, but you're risking, you know, risk it down to 105.80. You're risking 20 cents to make. I mean, this again, this is today, right? So this is a, this is a twofold example, right? So you had the buying, Boom. So this, you're risking 20 cents to make four dollars. Is, is that a good risk reward <laughs> in your money? This is again why stocks. This thing is so. It's this is so accurate even in stocks, right? You would think equities are there's so many games. I mean, look at this. this is, it doesn't get more. This is today. This is, it doesn't get more clear. I mean, a, a five year old can look at this and be like, Daddy, here's here's where they're buying, and I think it's going to go here. You know. So, but this is another example, like I showed in that stock earlier. Um, uh, Zynex, it's XLNX, I think it was. Here's all the liquidity, right? I mean, you have one little band of liquidity and then nothing. So, like we were talking about earlier, some if you're if you're thinking common sense wise, you're like, oh well, you know, there's there's a lot of sellers up here. I want to get short. No, you think opposite, right? It, <laughs> where you say, 
somebody wants these orders to be filled, this market will make it up into these orders eventually, right? Then the key is just to find the best place to get long. This at the time, as this came down, I got long this because one, I didn't see, you know, I saw the buying here, but I also saw no liquidity down here and I saw a ton up here. I'm like, okay, well, this is most likely going to go right back into this liquidity. Right, so then, so you had this huge move. This is four dollars in itself, and I'll show you the, the duration of this. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So then again, you have big buying through, small selling, big buyers, big buyers, big buyers, small small sell, small selling, buyers kind of starts to fail. And then it comes up here again. You can see the buying is a lot less. It's just from the bubble size. Again, this doesn't necessarily have to be a short, but if you're long. This is this is a good idea. The minute these guys start to kind of lose, I mean, you could have got out in here, but you could you could have waited to here and said, okay, it didn't even get to there, and okay, they're starting to sell it. You can get out right here, right? So again, that's a, almost a five dollar. You're risking twenty cents to make five dollars type of thing. But even if you're looking for a short, right, a clear liquidity, clear, clear liquidity, and then here it couldn't even get to it, and then you start to see this all come in. You can get short right around here, and you see the sellers come and risk risked up here. And you catch another five dollar move the other way. I mean, it just makes it's just such common sense looking at this. I mean, it just makes trading so much more clear than staring at a at an order book. Um, just a couple more here. Hopefully, this is making sense for the for the um, listeners. Yeah, yeah, we we got some questions coming in, and uh, we'll we'll get to them. But uh, keep keep okay. keep rolling. Yeah, I got I got two more. So this is a perfect example of. Algo run, this is JP Morgan. I look at this thing, look at this compared to Roku. I look at the difference, right? I mean, this is pretty clean. There's only, there's just a couple areas of high liquidity and then look at this. So you can see see these, you know, I, I get upset when I see it. I, I wasn't gonna use a profanity there, but you can see them, you know, putting it in, pulling it, put it in, pull it, put it in, pull it. It's just a big game, right? Then this is, you do not wanna participate in this market, in, in, in my opinion, right? Why? When there's 5,000 other stocks and 30 different futures markets, why would you even remotely want to participate in this type of market where they are just begging for retail tra traders to come and, and whipsaw your, you know, whipsaw your head off? So this is a good, I mean, all you have to do is pull up a stock. And if you see 50, 50 different colors, you don't want to be playing in that market. Um, and then my last example, again, that was from today as well, the JP Morgan, and then this is from today as well. So this is, uh, this is Netflix. Um, okay. Yeah. So this is another one of my, one of my, um, setups I like, so you can see here it busts through. I mean, look how heavy this liquidity was again, the darker, the red, the more, more liquidity, meaning more bids were there. You can see the heavy selling come in. They tried to buy it came down here. I mean, you could have gotten short here. But even if you wanted to wait, because you can see there's still buyers here, you're like, you might not want to mess with it. So it comes down here, comes up here, you can see it just dries up, right? Right into this area where it's sold through. You can sell it right when you see them start to come back, back in. You can, you know, sell 268, risk 60 cents, even a little more than that. I mean, you can go this liquidity, this liquidity, put it above here. You're risking 60, 80 cents to make, you know, this is $4 move, right? Again, and there's no reason to get out. It's sold right through here. Retest, fail, sold right through here. This is where I took the screenshot. So again, you can get out here a piece or you can see what happens here. Do the sellers continue to win or does it reject and go? I, I, I don't know of anything more clear than looking at this to make decisions. I mean, look at this again, like a five-year-old can look at this and look at the colors and say, tell you what's happening. Then you couple that with what you know, you know, from your trade and your experience and with the charts and things like that and the areas that you think are important this is how you make money trading. Um, that's it. That's it for my examples. Again, we had three or four just from today. Uh, fantastic. Yeah. Thank, thanks so much, Scott. Uh, re really great stuff. Um, uh, well, let's jump in here. Um, questions are uh, starting to roll in, and uh, we'll we'll start kind of from the top here, um, and then uh, and move our way down. Um, yes, this is recorded, uh, everybody. I'll show you where that is. Um, Oh, you know, you can go to our YouTube channel. Uh, I'll put this into the chat. And then uh, there's a Pro Trader webinar series playlist that's on the front, front page of that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, YouTube channel there. Okay. And then uh, just it'll be in that uh, that playlist there. And you'll see it on the on the home page here. 
uh, just uh, give me like uh, you know a couple hours here, and then I'll, I'll have it up, okay? Because it's going to take a little while for this to to parse, and then uh, I'll, I'll have the uh, uh, recording up for you guys. Um, all right, let's continue on here. Um, let's see, Tom, uh, or let's see who had another question here. Um, is spoofing not still happening often? Um, so. Uh, yeah, I think he, he he mentioned that Peter. That yes, it is. It's it's still absolutely. happening. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But the thing is, with with this program, you can see the spoofers, right? You can see where you know that J.P. Morgan example right here. You tell me, is this spoofing? That's spoofing. When you see the colors changing and and disappearing and coming back darker and then disappearing, this is spoofing, right? Whether people admit it or not. You know, if these orders aren't staying in there when the market comes up to them, it's it's flat out spoofing, and it happens all day, every day, in all markets, and it always has. Again, I used to spoof in 2003, 2000 to 2006. It was completely legal. But even even though it's illegal now, it doesn't mean it's not happening. So, I mean, again, this is this is why you can see right here to stay out of the highly spoofed markets for that day, right? Many days, the mini S&P here. I'll pull it over right here. This is live. Right, so this is, I mean, this is a market that looks pretty Christmas tree-ish, and I call it the Christmas tree, right? I mean, I just don't want to participate that much in this type of market when I see this. I mean, granted, E-mini looks like this a lot, and that's why I don't really trade it as much. But when I start seeing, you know, the relative volume come in, right, so there, again, this is right now, you know, I don't see, I just messed up the relative volume setting here. Um, Darn it. I just had it. No, I lost it. One second here. Here we go. Um, yeah, earlier in the day, there was definitely some very high relative volume, basically, before the market opened, like usual. But then market opens, and you can see this. There, there's nothing. Anything that's not yellow is not in my, you know, it's over two times relative volume for that time period, right? So you can see. And then you can also see right here, once we open, it's all this light blue, which means volume is normal or less than normal. And then you just see constant whipsaws, right? So it's moving up here. I would not be surprised to see this turn around, come back down here, and just play this game all day. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely try to play for the range trade. But when you're wrong, you're going to get your head ripped off. So it's like, unless you can build a program or write programs for this, there's no reason to ever waste your mental energy, in my opinion, right? And again, I've been training for 20 years, and I, I, I've... I've seen it all, and I know what is frustrating, and this is not a fun market to trade. And there's no reason to, especially when you have book map for equities as well. And you just have so many more options now than just staring at the shitty S&P all day long, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. There's some uh, some some questions here on on some of the settings. Um, so you're using the the uh, in Bookmap 7.1. It looks like you're using the uh, volume delta dots. Yeah, so there, there's two different types. Um, again, I'm very, I'm pretty new to the program as far as all the bells and whistles. I'm sure there's a ton more than I'm even using now, which is even more exciting. But um, I believe Bruce, so you have the the pie type where it shows you the, you know, the um, total the volume. Diagram, but, yeah, but total volume, and it shows you based on the pie, you know, what's. Uh, I think I could change it right here actually while we're on here. Just direct me, Bruce, because I... Uh, yeah, just the uh, microscope there. Uh, yeah, that one. And then uh, okay. click on uh, uh, volume dots at the second from the bottom there. No, no, click on that, click on that, but then click on the text volume dots there. Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, you, so total you're using um, total volume. Uh, you're using the volume delta. Is what, right. Uh, so, I mean, you can see, I, I, it's just not as clear to me, right? Like... There's this very fine line here and what's big, big selling versus, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is bigger selling than buying. I don't know. This is confusing to me, right? To me, it could be make all the sense in the world to another trader. But for me, this versus this is night and day, right? This this is clear as day to me what, you know, what's going on here. There's the sellers. Sellers are caught. Here comes the big buying. Get long. Retest. Doesn't come anywhere near. You can get long right here. Once you see the buying in, put your stop below here. You have all this liquidity, and you saw the sellers fail. This is a great risk reward where you're risking literally three three points to make. You know, went from 88. This is almost a 10 point trade, nine point trade. Again, this is just me just glancing at this, and I hate this market now, but it just shows you. you know, if you, 
you know what to look for. It's just this program is the most unbelievable thing I've seen in 20 years. Oh, wow, that's just fantastic to hear. Um, can, can you uh, just right-click on the uh, volume dot again? Uh, the, someone wants to see your settings here, and then go to volume dot settings. That's a quick way to bring this up as well. Uh, so you are using the smart clustering. Uh, let's see, it's for Tom, uh, and he's got it about halfway. I mean, basically, to me, uh, this just looks like you're using the default settings. Yeah, everything is default. Again, I haven't even yeah. started it. I, I probably know 10% of the of what there is to know in this program. And again, that makes it even more exciting to me because as I build my confidence, you know, with all these different things, it's it's the sky's the limit. Uh, wow. Okay, we got some questions in here, so let's try to let's try to get through these. Um, Let's see here. Uh, uh, can you size in the stocks, uh, or I guess you know, um, uh, scale into the stocks like you do in the futures? Uh, scale in as far as what? Well, I mean, so I mean, once you're 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 looking for just kind of getting it all in and then all out, or I mean, uh, the scaling in or just scaling into a position, a buying position. Yeah, in I mean, it trades exactly like futures does. I mean, you can. You can scale in whatever you want. You know, here you could, uh, you know, I, I don't like to rest my orders um, in these markets. You can, especially if you're getting out, but I, I like to see what happens, right? Just so just because there was buying here, right? This is, again, this is today. This is Roku. Just because there was buying here at 106 doesn't mean it doesn't go boom and then just rip right through it, right? So I want to see, I want to see a setup after I see this to be, in my opinion, the, the percentages are way higher that this is going to work out as a trade. This right here, you could you could buy right here, right? This is not a bad this is not a bad setup. Just seeing this huge buying into this liquidity, you know, you can buy a little piece again, scale in. Buy if you're trading a a ten lot, buy three here, buy five here, or whatever it is, and then if it comes back, fails, just buy some more here. So yeah, you can scale in anything. But stocks trade just as well as you know. Again, if you're not an algorithm ridden stock, you're you can see it. I mean, this, look how clean this trades. Right. Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Jay Schwinn, I think he answered the question about uh, what kind of uh, what you're looking for in terms of like a cleanish type of market, like cleaner chart. Um, he was he was trading crude there. Then he showed the examples of uh, that S&P. So uh, uh, and just, uh, you know, how there's just so much action back and forth on the bid and the offer. Right. Uh, this, this is the S&P today. I mean, it's just you can see, you know, when they're. Even when you try to expand it, it still looks like, still gives me a headache seeing all this color pull, put in, pull, put in, you know. And again, it's, when you when you see all this and you don't see enough relative volume, so you know the algos are just having a field day, this is where you get it whipsawed, right? So it's like, oh, oh, this thing's going to break out. It's not probably not going to break out because there's no, rel you know, there's no relative. You want to see relative volume because that means the big players are coming in and they're running over these algos. That's what you want to see. That that's what makes me happy because I hate algos, and I love to see the big player. That's why I look for high relative volume. Because if I don't see the high relative volume, I am not participating in in, the, in these futures. Period. Stocks, I will, um, but I will not. I just won't. I won't do it. I've given away too much money playing these games with these computers. Right. And that's what blew me out the first time, basically. Right. Right. Okay. So let's see. Um, I, hi, and I think that answers your question about. Um, uh, algos, I mean, he's looking for something very specific uh, in any of these markets here, okay? Uh, in terms of the algos or the, the kind of like clean chart or larger players with that relative volume. Uh, let's see here, are you... Okay, so Martin, I think you went over also the, the uh, clusters there for the volume. Uh, let's see, Tariq. Uh, are, have you been... Um, uh, Tariq's asking about uh, uh, in the futures markets. Uh, you're, you're connected with Rhythmic, I know. Um, and uh, uh, you're, are you? Uh, have you been uh, uh, playing around with uh, the the market by order data uh, that uh, is available? Uh, didn't even know it existed. <laughs> <laughs> Explain to me and the listeners what what is market by order. What is, I don't even know what that is. Okay, well, uh, it's a new. Uh, it's actually it's been out for a couple of years uh, and. Um, uh, it, it, it is showing you um, a position in Q. Uh, I mean, if you... Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. CME put that out. Yes. Yeah, only CME, only Rhythmic. Uh, right, right, right. And, and Bookmap. I um, obviously do not use that. Again, 
you know, as traders, especially if you're a new trader, you, you want to simplify it as much as possible. You start looking at all that, you're going to confuse yourself to no end, right? I mean, that's another reason I love this program. It doesn't get simpler than blue and red, and did the blue win, and did the red come in? I mean, this is crude right now, right? So it's like, again, you can just trade off this without even having a chart. You can see the big buyers, they failed. doesn't mean you get short right here, but when you see this big selling come in, you can get short, right? So it's like you get short and just risk right here. It doesn't mean it's not 100%, nothing is, ever. But you're just so much more informed and it's so simple. It's such a simple way to view the market. And again, you want to make it as simple as possible if you want to be a successful trader. It's hard enough to be right, let alone confuse yourself with 50 different um, you know, technical things. Right, right. Well, I mean, that that is uh, something that, uh, uh, you know, I, I I was very attracted to as well as like, this is not some sort of indicator. I mean, it's just showing you the market. Uh, right. And uh, uh, it's, it's... You can see what's happening, right? Right. So here, I want to show you something really quick. I didn't interrupt you, Bruce, but this is a perfect example of relative volume, right? So this is crude right now. I, uh, for some reason, when I bring it over here, I lose my... Uh, I had to expand it. Let's see here. Here we go. So you can see here... Here's high volume. This is almost four times volume, uh, 3.64, a little more right here, this this buying bar. Again, try to buy it again, right? Guess what? They're failing. It's holding right here, but if I were to have to play, and then this is what it looks like here, right? So here was the buying. Here was the heavy volume. That was, that was this bar here. Um, that was this bar right here. And then it went higher. Heavy, buy, heavy buying again, relative volume. This was like two times normal. Now, guess what? These guys are all underwater. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean it can't come back up. But the point is, if it breaks now, if it breaks this area, again, just looking at the chart, you know, okay, look at all this buying. Okay, if this breaks this area right here, these guys are all in trouble, right? And then you add in a little more. Again, it's what works for you, what makes sense to you. So I like VWAP. I, you can see it's holding VWAP, right? VWAP is right where this buying came in. But guess what? Not only if it fails here, not only are you going to get a puke of the VWAP guys that are, I'm sorry, a puke of the guys that bought. Now you have, so you have that added to the fire. Then you add in guys that like to sell when it breaks VWAP, just brand new selling, right? So you're going to get a double whammy here. If this can't hold, if this comes back down, you know, below 5807, I, I'd be willing to the wager as a trader that's what you're doing right that <laughs> it breaks down to the dva here you know the, the outer band here because the reason is again you've got to know when you want to get out and according to this volume i know there's a lot of volume here i know this should, thing should at least move 50 ticks if i'm right right so if it does break 5807 ish you can risk it to 58 you know just above view up i wouldn't even you don't have to go up here right? you can risk maybe 10 ticks 12 ticks you know, if you're wrong, you lose 12 ticks. If you're right, you're making 50, 60 or more. So this is real time live right now, only based on relative volume and seeing that these buyers could be offside. Again, now if it moves back above all this, guess what? These buyers are still right. These sellers are wrong and it's going to move up to this liquidity. So again, just by looking at liquidity, I'm going to, you know, looking at the chart, it looked like it might break. If it goes below or what, I still think it will. But if it gets above here, now you see, look, here's the heavy resting liquidity. There's none down here. That means they're going to run this thing up to these levels, 59, 59, 40. So again, you don't just blindly put an order in right here. You wait to see who's offside, who's about to lose, then you buy it. So I just gave you two, two different examples of getting long or short. Either one could be right because that's trading. But the point is, you know, when it breaks out of this area, it's going to rip because there's so much volume, relative volume that occurred in this area. Does that make sense, Bruce? Absolutely. No, I mean, it's a, it's a fantastic answer because like uh, you, it's like it can go both. There's two scenarios here uh, or, you know, three, basically you could just stay at VWAP, but like uh, uh, you are waiting to your, the setup is here and now you're waiting for the follow through. Uh, and when right. you see that, then you, you're, you're looking for uh, it to behave a certain way. Or Absolutely. higher probability. Absolutely, that's all trading as is probabilities. Uh, just uh, sounds fantastic here. Um, so let's see. Um, 
a few more questions here, and then uh, we've because we're already over an hour, and uh, it's uh, been uh, really nice that uh, as Scott has uh, made Sorry, the time. Sorry, a lot of talking. Oh, it, it's been really, really good stuff. I mean, uh, you know, it'd be great to just keep keep going here. Um, you can hear you can hear my passion for this, right? How enthusiastic <laughs> you know, so you got to remember, I, I was a one beaten down trader, and anybody who traded in the mid to to um, you know late two thousands is is a beaten down trader was a beaten down trader many many guys i'd say 90 percent of the people that i knew that traded don't even trade anymore hmm. so that just shows you how exciting this is that you know and i'm back in the game and you can hear the excitement in my voice and finally that's the key to training you're going to be wrong but knowing why you're wrong is the key when you're wrong consistently you have no idea why you have no chance like i have no problem being wrong now because then i'll look back you either at the replay or just looking at this and be like oh yeah okay so i didn't see that or i should have done that it's a whole different ball game when you're wrong constantly and you have no idea why i mean you might as well just find another profession yeah yeah just uh, it's like music to our ears here um uh let's see uh Greg, I think he, he, he answered your question there about uh, pulling market makers, liquidity spoofing um, uh, several times. Um, uh, Jill, um, he's using Rhythmic for futures. He's also connected. So in Bookmap, you can connect to multiple data providers. Uh, he's connected to U.S. equities with DX feed. Okay, so uh, that's what's going on there. Um, uh, no, David. I mean, uh, pulling pulling liquidity on in in equities versus futures. I mean, uh, you, all you have to do is just cancel, uh, basically. Uh, and then Arthur, you got a couple questions here. Uh, what's the difference between the high dots and the one dots on a chart? You mean to say the pi and the other? Okay, so uh, that was the uh, relative. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, not relative. That was the volume delta. Uh, Arthur, so and that's what uh, Scott is looking at here. So when you see, you're only looking at someone one here, like either buyers or sellers, because it's buy minus sell. So what that means is, is the delta then, it's the difference between the two, and it's either going to plot it as he's got the aggressive buyers as blue and the aggressive sellers market sell orders uh, as red. So you have the the um, kind of um, uh, context there, who's in control by looking at the size of and color of the dot. Okay, and uh, a couple more questions and uh, that, that we'll call it a day here. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, Arthur, I can go through that with you if you like, um, uh, if you have any, any issues on that. Uh, David, let's see. Um, Yeah, so a couple of questions on on stocks here and about like being able to put in the size. Um, uh, do you run into kind of any any uh, uh, limitations there? Uh, looking at the book and and you know how much liquidity is there? Uh, you, you know what what kind of size are are you you know if you see like you know uh, let's say 500 uh, shares uh, you know at uh, at some of the levels. Uh, are you able to come in with like 2000, uh, you know, market buy orders or are you, are you using some limit orders on some of the stocks? Uh, I'm usually market and yeah, I mean, you're, you could scare the market a little bit. I mean, it's all relative, right? I mean, different stocks, have, obviously it's based on the shares outstanding and the daily float and things like that. I mean, you can, you can easily look at the order book and see, you know, 500 up on every tick is a 5,000 lot going to affect the market or scare the market? Absolutely. That's what these algos are designed to do. The minute you put it in as a limit order, they run it away from, from you, right? And then you chase it, then you get filled and they turn around and run it back the other way. So um, I usually just go to market just because it's just, there's no reason to even put limit orders in when you're using book map, in my opinion, because you can see the areas, you can see the areas where if it fails and you can go market and then put your stop below that area. You don't have to, you don't have to just let your orders sit there and hope you don't get run over. Does that does that make sense? Absolutely. I mean, I I love the style uh, as well. Um, uh, that uh, you're looking for something specific and then just jump in. I mean, like you might be left behind with your limit uh, buy orders. Uh, uh, and, and right. Or run over. Right. Just because. Or run over. Because there's liquidity there, and you put your bid in. Say there's a lot of uh, you know bid liquidity, or say right here in crude, for example, you, there's a lot of offer liquidity, and you put a sell here. Yeah, you could be right, but this thing can rip right through it. Right. So it's like you want to see how it reacts when it gets up here, not not just hope 
that's the whole idea. Like you can go, you can go to the casino if you just want to hope. If you want to, if you want to be an informed and put an informed trade on, you wait to see what happens in this area. That's why you don't have to worry about going to the market because once I see this fails, I'll go to the market right here and I'll put my stop above here if I want to get short. If it rips through here, comes back, fails, starts going back up, I'll buy right here. I'll put my this this is this is where you can you know where to put your orders right by looking at this. I mean, it doesn't get more clear than this. Right. Right. Um, and then uh, let's see, Andrew's uh, asking here about your daily VWAP um, and uh, upper and lower bands, uh, standard, one standard deviation. Uh, are you looking at the the VWAP on the cash session or the, uh, you know, entire like uh, session? It's the 24 hour. 24 uh, hour. Right. Okay. That's what okay. I use. Again, I just, I mean, I, I don't get too technical with that stuff. That, <laughs> that's basically the uh, default on thinkorswim. Uh, I know it's the 24-hour VWAP, and that's what I use. I mean, that's what works for me. Again, some people use an anchored VWAP, right? They just they start the VWAP after a big event like earnings or a news report, and they start it from there. It, it, there's all there's a lot of different variations. Again, it has to make sense for you. That's where traders fail, and where you get all these emails about all these systems and all this other stuff. It has to make sense to you on the areas that you want to trade. Then you use the book map to validate those areas. Right. That's it. Right. Um, okay. So uh, uh, let's um, let me. I'll take the uh, screen here, uh, Scott, and uh, I want to put okay. these these links back in for everybody. Um, and um, uh, so uh, you you guys have a reference to for more information here. Uh, there you go. It's in the. Uh, and uh, oh, I, I'll I'll grab it here. Okay. So okay, I thought I had to do it. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Okay. All right. So I put it into the chat, and uh, you know, here here is the uh, uh, some of Scott's uh, information. You can follow him uh, at uh, on Twitter at Scott uh, Pulsini. Uh, YouTube search for uh, Scott Pulsini. Uh, his interview. I'll show you where this is in his Bookmap affiliate link. I put it into the chat there as well as his Bookmap interview. Uh, it's it's a new interview that we just came up with a, a few weeks ago. So. Uh, you know, everything's pretty fresh there. Uh, let me show you on the YouTube channel uh, where you'll find the recordings. Okay, so uh, search for Bookmap on YouTube. Uh, scroll down a little bit here. Uh, Pro Trader Webinar Series. Okay, it'll be in here. And uh, you can, it, this is on the home page here, as well as just click on the link here and you'll see all the rest of the uh, Pro Trader uh, webinars that we have here. Okay, uh, so I, I think that's everything. Scott, thank you very much. Uh, fantastic uh, presentation. Uh, and uh, I think that's been uh, really helpful for, uh, for everybody. So I um, uh, would love to have you another time. Yeah, I appreciate it. Again, I, I hope it made sense. And, you know, you can see I'm not some, you know, highly technical trader. It's just, it's just using common sense, kind of knowing, you know, the games that are being played. And that's about it. And again, I, and I told Bruce, you know, when Dr. Steenbarger introduced me to this program, I, I mean, the light went on again. And when I, I've told Bruce many times, it is the most powerful, by far the most powerful software I have seen in 20 years where you can understand what is happening and you don't have to confuse yourself by looking at the order book and not just trade off charts and things like that. So hopefully people can, you know, kind of tailor this to themselves, but I can promise you if you work at it and, you know, you use the replay function and you know, get on the daily webinars with Bruce, you, you will become a successful trader. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, we'll uh, we'll continue on uh, with the Pro Trader webinar uh, uh, for the rest of the week here, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, and, uh, yeah, it just uh, a fantastic stuff, Scott. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. All right, everybody. Uh, take care. We'll, we'll catch up with you tomorrow. Bye-bye.